Well, hi everyone and welcome to Rob Evans 365. It's day number 414 and today I might be a little bit controversial. We'll see what sort of mood I'm in and how deep I go with this topic. Uh, but I am at it's mid, mid evening, I'll call it. I have had an extremely busy day today up super early schedule absolutely nuts this morning and i've got to run a session tonight and i am feeling a little bit tired so i needed to get step away from the desk and uh, just try and revitalize myself a little bit i'm looking forward to having a soak in the tub later a nice bath because it's cold and I just need to chill out and relax. I'm feeling oh, a little bit, uh, a little bit brain dead. I think today it's been really intense the last few days, really intense. Uh, so I'm looking forward to just just chilling out for a bit later on this evening. But for right now, I'm talking to you, and I wanted to talk about the case that's in the paper at the moment, which is the young Australian swimmer Shana or Shana. I don't know Shana. Is that how you pronounce it? Jack. Now, for those of you that don't know, I mean, just Google drugs and swimmer and she'll come up as number one right now. And so she failed a drug test for uh, a banned substance and her A test uh, failed and her B test sample failed as well. And so she's been banned from uh, competition. Now, there is a chance that she could be banned for life. There's a chance that she could be banned for years. Uh, and she withdrew from the World Championships and uh, obviously this can, can um, definitely uh, ruin her career. So there's a couple of areas where you can have a look at this. Okay, so she's swearing her, her innocence and let's go with this one first. So she's saying that she's swearing her in, in innocence because uh, the... Uh, the banned substance got into her body via a, a contaminated supplement. Now, let's just talk about that for a moment. Now, there are there is another case that uh, was just it was in the U.S. and they successfully sued a supplement company because the I think it was an MMA fighter. Uh, was found uh, guilty of taking a banned substance and they proved that this uh, particular supplement company who I hadn't heard of before uh, was uh, not following practices or whatever and the substance got into the supplement and they sued for $27.3 million or something like that. Some crazy amount of money because it destroyed this guy's uh, ability to earn money, etc., etc so let's let's just focus on this for a moment okay they haven't said the brand of supplement that she was taking but she's saying that it must have got in there that way now yes athletes have said before that this has happened to them before where they've eaten uh, contaminated foods and the supplements gone in has it ever happened before where that's the case yes it has uh, is that the case this time? Who would know? She would know if she's obviously taking a banned substance on purpose and just now trying to cover it up. But let's give her the benefit of the doubt for the moment. Uh, you've got uh, many examples of cyclists that have uh, claimed that they've eaten contaminated food before. Alberto Contador is one that claimed that he ate uh, steak in some uh, some place when he was uh, riding overseas and that this meat happened to be contaminated with this banned substance and uh, he was still found guilty I think oh, did he get off that oh I can't remember uh, to be honest now he might have gotten off that um, but uh, you know there, there's been like Bradley Wiggins uh, he's claimed that he had asthma, so therefore he was able to uh, ingest uh, huge quantities of salbutamol to help uh, open up his airways and give him a, 
a performance enhancement. It wasn't against the rules, but he all of a sudden had asthma, which he'd never had it before, apparently. And then all of a sudden, he's got asthma. Um, uh, you know, people find a way to justify what it is that they're, they're doing, and they get told what to, to say and all that kind of stuff. I mean, just look at Lance Armstrong. And for like 10, 20 years, he claimed his innocence. He stood, sat in court and swore that he'd never taken performance enhancing drugs. And the reality was he certainly had, he'd taken a lot of them and he'd been doing it for every single Tour de France win, etc., etc. So I don't know, it's a bit hard to know where the truth lies amongst what people are prepared to do because it has such a big impact on their their careers, their livelihood, uh, reputation, all of that kind of stuff. I would just say if you're going to take performance enhancing drugs and compete at that level, you're stupid because you're going to get caught out at some point. But anyway, let's just assume that it was a contaminated uh, supplement. Now... I don't know who the hell is her coach or her nutritionist or dietitian, whatever, but if she is taking a product that is not absolutely certified to be what's on the label is in the container, then she is freaking crazy and it serves herself right. Because a lot of these companies that put together protein powders and that kind of stuff, they don't have to satisfy the same requirements as a chemist. It's a food manufacturing practice. It's not pharmaceutical grade manufacturing processes, uh, which there are companies out there that put these supplements together that do do that. And why the hell wouldn't she be getting her supplements from a company like that where they provide guarantees and certification that these can be taken by Olympic athletes, those that need to be drug tested and they're certified to be clean and they provide guarantees and so forth that if an athlete is ever found to uh, have, uh, you know, fails one of these tests because these products are contaminated, then they'll uh, reimburse them costs and and so forth because... um, It's their policy that it's tested to make sure that they don't have any of that stuff in it and it's pure. Why the hell wasn't she taking something like that? Now, this is one of the things that I like about what I put into my body. Now, the the Isogenics products are all athlete approved so that they go through all the different tests. They're uh, they're peer-reviewed by other uh, scientists to prove that these products are clean and that they've got the uh, you know the natural ingredients uh, and the actual ingredients that what's on the label is in the container because most of the stuff that you get is not like that but the isogenic stuff is Um, there are other companies that do it as well uh, but they're few and far between why an athlete at that level would not be taking supplements from a trusted source is just stupidity in my view just stupidity now we don't have all the details of what supplement company it was and all that kind of stuff but um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be someone like Isogenics because their stuff is pure Uh, So it's disappointing. It's disappointing for her. Now, let's take another look at it. Let's go another step further, perhaps. Now, this poor girl, if she is innocent, if this was a contaminated supplement, then shame on her for not having better advice to guide her alternatively. Because, look, you don't know what you don't know. And I only know that it would be ludicrous to do something like that because of the research and the the reading that I do and so forth. But man, if she's like the best in the world, why the hell isn't somebody advising her better to take, you know, better supplements and different supplements and stuff and saying, look, well, like if, if I'm competing, like if I am training an athlete, like a world athlete, I talk to them about, tell me specifically what every supplement is that you're taking. Now, if they choose not to, if they're taking something banned and they choose not to tell me, well, that's on them. But if 
uh, you know, I talk to them, tell me which protein powder you're taking, which brand are you taking, how much are you taking, what are the other things you're taking, what other vitamins are you taking, because we have to make sure that if you get drug tested, then you are going to pass because you are clean and making sure that you're taking certified products. Um, so I do that, and I'm not working with Olympic athletes yet, but if you are, why the hell? It just defies logic to me. Completely defies logic. Um, but I feel sorry for her. That, like, if you don't know, you don't know. And she just thinks, well, I'm just taking stuff out of the, uh, off the shop. It's uh, sold at Woolies or whatever. Or it's sold at Chemist Warehouse. Surely it's okay. Uh, then I feel sorry for her that she didn't have better advice. Now, let's just say that... Um, uh, all those things are, are, are not true and that, you know, it wasn't contaminated. She didn't take it, um, but somebody is tampered with the sample. Is that possible? Is it possible that there are two samples, an A and a B sample of hers, and both of the, them have been tampered with in some way by human intervention to make sure that she failed the test? And I could say the obvious answer to that is, it will, of course, it's possible that that happened. And if that did, then, oh my goodness, shame on those people uh, for doing that. Only she really knows the truth, I guess. If, you know, if obviously if she was taking it and wanting to get away with it, then she knows that. If it was a contaminated product, then it's up to her to prove that it's contaminated, no. Uh, you know, maybe she's still got the product and they can test the rest of it or whatever. Uh, if somebody has uh, deliberately done it, then I don't know how she can... It's, if it's up to her to, to prove that, it comes down to the security of the facility doing the testing and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I have a, a client that's a medical scientist and uh, she does, uh, you know, lots of blood testing and that kind of stuff every single day. And obviously there are security measures in place, but look, where humans are involved, accidents can happen, uh, whether it's done deliberately or by accident. It can, it can just happen. Things, samples can get mixed around and all that kind of stuff. It's, I mean, those things are possible. But um, I guess at the end of the day, if she's innocent, man, I really feel for her, the poor girl, what she's going through. Because uh, all you have is your reputation. And as soon as somebody makes an allegation against an athlete like that, then you immediately think that they're guilty and they're just trying to cover it up. That's the immediately, immediately what you think. It's a, a bit like a, a rape allegation being made against a man. Immediately you think they're guilty. Whether they are or not, because the allegation is out there, you immediately think, well, they must have done it. And... Uh, unfortunately, that's a, it's a shame that uh, that's the way society is, that it's up to the person to prove their innocence. And uh, all I hope is that justice is done. So if, if she's um, you know, innocent of, of these you know, charges and contamination and so forth, then she shouldn't be found guilty. Uh, but if, obviously if she did it, then... Sorry, love, you've got to wear the price and you cannot win at all costs. Uh, life is not about that. So I guess time will tell, but from my experience, certainly in uh, cycling, these things can take years sometimes to be resolved properly. Uh, but uh, she's certainly feeling the heat right now because she's not allowed to compete. And I'm sure it's incredibly stressful for her and her family. So uh, let's just hope that justice is done and the right thing is done. But uh, if I come back to the point that I said before, one of the things that I am very driven by is identifying what are the world's best practices, what are the world's best um, learnings, coaching, resources, supplements... Uh, that are available to me that I can be using myself and then um, what I can be doing with 
um, my clients as well and spreading the word to saying, look, you've got to be part of this because um, if this is world class and you want world class results, then you've got to do these things. And I guess I, I like to think that I've dedicated my life to identifying what those things are. And I know that I'm just scratching the tip of the iceberg here. Just scratching the tip of the iceberg. And that, to me, is exciting. It is really exciting. I mean, I've identified uh, the, the world's best mindset coach uh, being uh, Tony Robbins. I've had coaching from him. I've done his programs. I've got the number one wealth coach in the world in my corner, my coach, JT. Um, he's taught me a lot about uh, a mindset as well, uh, but how to, how to turn my business into a money-making machine and how to uh, get better results for people and how to um, just run it so much better than I have before with a different level of focus. And that has also had a big impact on my life, how I, how I lead my life and the purpose that I have in my life. And to me, that is super exciting, really exciting. And uh, most recently, it's like it comes down to the relationships that you build as well, don't you? I was talking to my... Um, my team with Kerry Pothast and, and her team about uh, being world's best relationships, you know, like world quality relationships. I mean, that's what I want to do. I want to I want to be mixing with the the best people in the world that at what they do, so that I can learn from them and, and become a better a better person myself. And uh, you know, being able to uh, speak with Kerry. Uh, most days, I mean, we're, we're speaking every day either via text, multiple times, or voice message, or phone call, or Zoom call, or something like that, and sharing ideas, thoughts, how do we grow our businesses, uh, what can we be doing together, uh, what can we be doing as a, a whole team together as well, and to me that's really exciting, really exciting stuff. And so when it comes to uh, you know, finding... Uh, new information. I'm always testing it on myself to make sure that this is something that I believe in before I'm going to start talking about it in the context of promoting it. And I, I guess today is, you know, the, the drug stuff. It just reminded me as to why uh, the supplement company uh, of Isogenics is so uh, so aligned to my vision of of health and wellness and world's best practice because if this athlete had been taking just their products she wouldn't be in this position now if it is a contamination issue that is she might be just saying it is and it's not but if it is a real contamination issue then that wouldn't have happened uh, with Isogenics and she'd probably be performing even better uh, than she, she is and certainly be having a, a clean peace of mind. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I was sceptical when I first started and I thought, well, do you know what? My health is so good now. How could it get any better? Because I, I just feel so good now. I eat so much plant-based food Surely I'm getting all the nutrients that I need from those foods. But I guess what we don't know is what is actually in the food that we're eating now. Where are, is it deficient? Where are we missing those nutrients that we, we need to perform at our best? And I am walking, talking, living proof that uh, I, clearly I wasn't getting in all the nutrients I need because I feel so much better now. And if I feel better now on the supplements, that says to me that, well, obviously I wasn't getting everything in because I, there would be no change. And that there is a change. Uh, so uh, that comes down to the quality and the testing and the science that, that goes into it, which is why it makes me excited to talk to people about it and, um, you know, help make a 
a more impactful uh, change on their life. So I guess that's my, my thoughts on today. Don't take drugs. Don't try and cheat the system. In the long run, you've got to live with yourself. And I don't know. Would you, I, I saw a survey many years ago that if the gold medal, well, sorry, if an Olympian could be guaranteed winning a gold medal if they just took this, you know, this supplement, this, this drug that was banned, but they took it, I may get this wrong, but it was like 80, 90% of the people said that they would take the drug so that they would win the gold medal. Uh, that's disturbing, isn't it? At the end of the day, you've got to live with yourself and be able to look yourself in the eye and say, yep, I won this on my merits. I won it on my own terms and I feel good about it uh, as opposed to, do you know what? Everybody else was clean, but I cheated. I just got away with it. Uh, I think that's going to catch up with you at some point. It's going to catch up with you. So be clean, be lean, be healthy, be strong. Here's a good example, actually, before I finish here. I used to train uh, at uh, a gym in Danny on Mike's gym. It doesn't exist anymore. And uh, I used to train there at the same time uh, a few times a week with a natural bodybuilder. And this guy was phenomenal. He was in awesome shape. He was about my height. In fact, he was probably a little bit shorter than me. He had phenomenal legs. He had like this amazing defined six-pack all year round. And I'm not talking just being lean. He had like big abdominal muscles and, and stuff and massive arms. Like his arms were probably twice the size of mine. And he was 100% natural. He was uh, tested so many times. Uh, through the year and through the competition season and so forth over like over a decade and passed every every time because he was completely natural yeah really strong dude like the weights that he was lifting was just phenomenal i used to be in awe of of how powerful uh, he was and still is he competes in crossfit now in the master section i think uh but just yeah really really phenomenal guy and when i looked at him and i thought you know what if you can look like that with hard work and doing it naturally, why would you want to bother putting your health at risk and, and doing drugs uh, when you can look as good as that? You say, well, yeah, I want to look much bigger than him. But the reality is, um, if you don't have your health, then you've got nothing. So it's not worth it. It really isn't. So I like the... The healthy lifestyle, strong, vibrant, and uh, not putting the impurities into your body, but instead cleansing them uh, to get all the antioxidants and rubbish out and just filling yourself with nutrient rich food. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm uh, on my return journey to home now, I'm almost back home, and uh, the sun's almost about to set. You have a great evening or morning, wherever it is that you are uh, at the time that you're listening to this. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Well, actually, final footnote. Day two is going well on my challenge. I'm not going to talk about it every day. You can watch some of the videos I'm putting on social media. Uh, thanks for joining my, my live views for those of you jumping on. And... Uh, you know, feel free to post your comments and so forth. Um, I'm hoping to get my in-body scan done over the next couple of days. And um, we can get some results there to measure against the, in a bit more science in, in 30 days' time. Uh, but I'm having fun, having fun recording the videos, enjoying my performance supplements. And uh, God, I love life. See you tomorrow.